Hello and good Tuesday, February 12, 2008. I'm Joanne and today is the 199th birthday of Mr. Charlie Darwin. Charles, as most called him, was the guy who first articulated in detail the mechanisms of the life cycle we call evolution. Maybe it's easier to see now because there's more data available for comparison. That's rather a compelling image. Hard to not consider the likeliness of that, for starters. So this being the 199th birthday, the ardent followers are mostly using this year's anniversary to discuss plans for next year. So in preparation for the big 200, let's review the theory of evolution in general. Let's do it visually, and let's be swift. Did you know that whales used to have legs and live on land? They're still mammals, and they breathe from the air just like we do, it's just that they can hold their breath underwater for a really long time. A long time ago, when these beasts spent most of their time on land, food may have been scarce, so they'd go for a dive into the sea to find all kinds of yummy stuff to eat. Eventually, they were in the habit of going into the water to get their food on a full-time basis. As time went on, and on, they eventually started spending more time in the water, until one day a baby whale was born with a birth defect. Like, let's say a particular mummy whale got snagged on a coral reef, or somebody took a big bite out of the poor mummy whale when the baby was born, and it was all deformed and its nose ended up on its head. At first, all the other young whales might have called this poor baby whale names, but in the long run, the whale found that having a nose on top of its head was pretty nifty. For one, it could do cool tricks, but even better, the whale could just float to the surface, staying in the water to take a breath, instead of having to go back to land. So it could outdo all the other whales at sea, and thus had a much easier time eating. And let me tell you, the ladies loved it. The female whales found this particular male whale quite clever, and much better suited for the harsh environment. And let's face it, he had the best eats. He was becoming bigger and better than all the other whales. Next thing you know, because genotypes get passed on from the parents to the offspring, you have all these baby whales with the same genetic defect, and now there are all these whales with noses on their heads swimming around full-time in the ocean. Originally, it was just a fluke, but now it's kind of like the way to be. As time went on, and on, the other land whales with old noses had a hard time, because they always had to go back to land and breathe, and eventually died out, because nobody loved them anymore. I know, it's sad, but nobody ever said life was fair. So, that's basically what it comes down to. Pretty simple, right? Three things. First, you have gene flow through reproduction. My genes come from my parents, and I can pass on my genetic traits. Children whales look kind of like parent whales. Second, there's a genetic drift. I like to use the word mutation. Mutation creates a variation in the genes. Baby whale is born with a hole in its head, even though the parent whales didn't have a hole in their heads. And third, natural selection, or the yearbook award winner for the most likely to reproduce. Most likely to produce gets ahead, and that's the name of the game. If you want to get picky about it, you can leave a comment. And while my example with the whale was somewhat extreme, for the process of change usually occurs in much smaller proportions over more of a geological time frame, there is a way of seeing evolution occur more quickly, like in about 20 minutes. Take a single-cell bacteria, for instance. Perhaps a single-cell bacteria was originally inanimate, kind of like a rock or something, and then it got hit by lightning or salt or whatever, and suddenly mutated into a moving thing. <coughs> yeah, we don't need any presuppositions here about how life was formed, so just try not to worry about it. Let's just assume that the bacteria is an animal, regardless of how it got to be one. Bacteria can reproduce about every 20 minutes by splitting into two, so they can get into millions pretty quickly. Drop a little bit of wicked tar acid into their world, and suddenly a lot of them get all deformed, and a few hours later, you have some new species emerging. Another way of looking at this whole thing quite simply is to say that it's possible for babies to be born with mutations that their parents didn't have. The mutation is either a good thing or a bad thing. As the mutants reproduce and spread, eventually they can't reproduce with each other, and thus become classified as a whole new, different kind of species. So where is it all going? The Beatles have been quoted as saying, nobody knows. David Byrne's claims were on the road to nowhere. In Kansas, they say we're all just dust in the wind. They also say follow the yellow brick road. But the thing I've always wondered is whether or not wondering is a good thing or a bad thing. It might seem good, we might seem to be doing better than everyone else, but is that reasonable? Are we sure our reason is not a negative mutation? Anyway, happy 199th birthday, Mr. D.